What's up everyone, welcome back to vlog number 13, we got a jam packed episode, lots of thousand dollar pots, we make a pretty sick hero call, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let's get right into some action. Alright, so this was about the second hand we played at 2-5, and in watching this back, I realized I'm an idiot and never picked up my cards, so I'm sorry about that, but I promise you I have 5-7 of clubs here. There's two limps, I raise to 20, and both call. I posted this question on Twitter, so some of you might remember this hand, but we flop the joint. We flop an open-ended straight flush draw, along with already having a straight on a board that really should not favor me as the pre-flop aggressor, so we have a super disguised amazing hand here. So when they both check to me, I decide to down bet for $20 and they both make the call, so things are looking up here. We see a brick on the turn, but it actually brings in another flush draw, so there's a club and a spade flush draw out there. And now, interestingly enough, the first player leads out for $90, so I'm like, alright, this is going good. And now the next player basically snap calls the $90, so I'm like, all right this is great so what's pretty obvious to me is that the first player that let out either has a top pair holding that is wanting to protect from both flush draws and straight draws or she has some type of draw that she's willing to make her own price for basically stating that i'm only willing to pay 90 dollars for the next card but when the next player snap calls as well he definitely has some type of draw obviously not a strong hand or else that's a great spot for him to raise so when the action's back on me, I'm thinking in my head, all right, they both have something, so I have to raise. If it was just one opponent and I was in position, I would for sure just call, but I decide to raise. Now the question is sizing. Do I just min click it to 180? Does that look too strong? Do I try to bomb it to like 350? Because I definitely would want to size huge if I had something like ace king of clubs, king queen of clubs, even something really good like jack 10 of clubs that has so much equity but nothing at the moment. So I want to do that with my strong hands as well so that it's not so easy to play against me, you know? I'm not just calling when I have great hands and raising when I have bluffs, you know? You need to keep it balanced. But here's where I think I make a mistake, and honestly, I don't want to be too harsh and results oriented because I think this is a actually good raise. I raised to $350, which is about 3x both my opponents raise, and considering the fact that there's a call in there. A lot of people have said that this raise is too big, but honestly, I think it's pretty good because like I said, I would be raising to this exact sizing with ace king of clubs, ace king of spades, king queen of spades, king queen of clubs, all those hands. I have so many bluffs here. I raised preflop, so I still could have aces, kings, queens on this board, but my opponent should smash this board with two pairs, straights, flush draws, all this stuff, so I think at least one of these opponents should be continuing. It folds back to the woman who let out for 90, and she folds, so it looks like she was trying to set her own price, but still a weird line. And the next player folds as well, so actually a disastrous turnout for what started to be an amazing hand. We still win about $350 in this hand, but we could have won a massive pot. Obviously results oriented, I'm like I should have just called, a lot of you guys say just call. But I think a lot of the people that say I should have just called would have agreed with a raise if either one or both my opponents called. So, you know, it's hard to not be results oriented. I actually think that this is a good raise, but I'm curious, what do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments. A lot of you guys have been showing me great responses in my Twitter and in my Discord. Definitely follow me on Twitter. Definitely follow my Discord because I post all my hands in there. I discuss a lot of stuff. I ask you guys for feedback. So I love your feedback. Definitely, as always, leave it in the comments and we're on to the next. Alright, this is the hand you guys have been waiting for, the craziest bluff catch I have ever had. So try to follow along as I put the action on the screen. I don't know, you guys might like this better because it might be easier to follow, but here we go. I have pocket nines in the small blind. I raised to $25 and two people call. So we're headed three ways to a flop, which comes five, six, eight, rainbow. The hand, about two hands before this, I had ace, queen, raised, and c bet and took it down. So when I see bet for $40 here, it might look as if I'm playing a lot of hands, see betting a lot, so I might not have a strong hand here. I certainly could have ace king, ace queen, king queen that I'm see betting with and have absolutely nothing. So when the guy to my left raises to $100, I don't necessarily immediately put him on a super strong hand. I decide to call. We could be best, but still a couple good turns for us as well. The turn is now a 6, which is awesome because it reduces the possibilities that he has 5-6, which is a hand that I definitely put him on, or pocket 6s. The sets that he still obviously could have are pocket 5s or pocket 8s, but overall a great card for me. I check, and now he bets $300, which as you can see is over the size of the pot, 
it's a super interesting bet because if he had a set a flopped straight I think he would be going for value like he wouldn't want to fold out my king queen ace king because I'd be drawing dead if he had a set or a straight so I think about it for a while and decide to call obviously thinking there's a very good chance he shoves the river but again I still could hit a seven I still could hit a nine so we're headed to a river which is a pretty big brick a three now I check and he jams for five hundred dollars well Let's think about this. He's certainly representing a set in pocket fives, pocket sixes, pocket eights, or a flop straight in four seven or seven nine, in which we obviously block, which is relevant. Here's the hard part to explain. I have about 130 hours at two five and ten ten in parks. It's relatively a lot. Obviously, there are players who have thousands and thousands of hours. I'm relatively new, but I've gotten a very good sense of understanding my opponents. Again, something hard to explain, but I can pretty much sense body language, how you're acting, how you're betting, if it's representing a very strong hand or somewhat of a bluff. If you guys remember in one of my very early vlogs, I looked at my opponent when I had about third or fourth pair with just a six and picked off his bluff. I look at my opponent now and he's got very similar body language. He's trying to look very relaxed, he sat back in his seat. He put his glasses to the top of his head, he's looking at the TVs, he's looking very relaxed. And this is why when I play, and honestly I suggest you do this too, whether you're betting for value, whether you're bluffing, whether you have no idea if you have the best hand or a terrible hand, just look down at the board every single time. If you don't want to do that, look at your phone every time, look at the TV every time. You need to do something every single time so nobody can take a read off you. What's funny about this hand is while this hand was playing out, I actually got called for 10-10. So what I'm thinking is, I have to go to the cashier after this hand regardless because I need to exchange my chips for 10-10. So I either go to the cashier with chips or without chips. So I'm like, you know what? He, it's, he's representing such a small, small range. He either has a very like four or five few combinations of hands that beat me or the wide range of hands that he could just be bluffing and going crazy with. So I take a deep breath, and I call. We get the good news as he says, ugh, I missed, and shows queen seven offsuit. He went crazy with just an open-ended straight draw. I'm so, so happy that I made the call. And we win a huge pot, over $1,000 here. So this was a great result. I'm happy I thought it through. Looked at his body language, felt it out instead of immediately snap calling or immediately snap folding. It worked out good, and now we have plenty of profit and plenty of chips to take to 10-10. Let's run it up. Alright, so we got in the 2-5 game for 1,000, out for 22-32. We played for only about 45 minutes, and we're on to 10-10. Let's continue this run good and run this stack up. You guys like this little ask section, so let's do it again. The straddle's on, we're playing 10, 10, 20, and I pick up ace, king suited. Under the gun, plus one, who is first to act, raises to 60. What would you guys do in this spot? Please drop a comment below, pause the video, let me know what you guys would do. We choose option B and raise to $200 and two players call, so we're headed three ways to a flop with already $600 in the middle, which is not great for us in 10, 6, 3. The first player checks, and now the next player bets $200. This is a super weird line, and especially in these pretty big 10-10 games, nobody does this. Nobody just donks out right into the initial raiser. I don't know if people perceive me as weak. I don't know if he's just trying to feel it out with a weak 10, 10-9, queen 10, king 10, jack 10 to see where I'm at. So here's where I think I make an actual big mistake. I decide to just call this $200. I think I should be raising if I'm going to be putting more money in this pot. I don't like a call. I think it's the worst option. I'm curious to see what you guys think. I think a raise is in order here, and I put my reasons on the screen. I think, one, you need to see how strong of a hand he has here. I think a lot of the times he definitely just has a 10 and is betting out to see where he's at in the hand because he's going to be putting me on a lot of ace-king, ace-queen. A lot of overcards that do not hit this board and I think he's trying to take advantage of the fact that this board is better for him. He might not even have a 10 so he might snap fold to a raise. And two, you need to continue the control and aggression in this hand. 
This should allow two free cards as he should 100% check the turn and it, we can check back if unimproved. So I don't like the call here. I think a raise is definitely in order, but I decided to call. Let's see a turn. Well, that sucks. The deuce of nothing on the turn. So fucking frustrating. Don't you just love a two that changes nothing? He bets out for $350 and there's pretty much nothing I could do here. It's a pretty frustrating statement to admit, but I'm not properly rolled for this game, so I feel like this is actually a perfect spot for me to jam all in, as I should be the only one to have pocket 10s, aces, kings, queens. The only strong hands he'll have here is pocket 6s and pocket 3s. He could have these hands, but I don't think he does. Don't think he's got much. Wish I could have jammed all in here, as I think it would have worked. But we have to fold and it's on to the next. Very quickly, shout out to Musa Arts for sending me these beautiful canvases. They're awesome quality. Check out the link in the description if you want some yourself. Alright, this hand right here is why you guys come to the channel. It's got the hand analysis, the big pots. I'm not sure if I played it the best way, but I want you guys to pay attention very intently to this hand because I need feedback. So let's get right into it. We pick up jack-10 offsuit, I know, not a good hand, and I'm in the small blind, so I should certainly fold this when the hijack raises it up to 50, but he's been playing a lot of hands, so I want to get in here, hope to make a big hand, or I could bluff him because I don't think he's got a lot here, he's been opening so many hands, so that's an indicator that they don't really have strong hands, but let's see how it is, and let's see a flop. So we see a board of 578 rainbow. Obviously a much better board for me in the small blind than him in the hijack and like I said he's been opening up a lot of hands. I decide to check and now he bets $40. I debate raising right here because honestly like I said it's a much better board for me. His range should be anything with higher pairs, ace king, king queen, anything that is not going to like this board unless he pretty much specifically has pocket eights. But I decide to call looking to improve on the turn to a straight draw or just another card that I can maybe bluff. And we get exactly that in the later option when the turn comes a four. So now any six makes a straight, it's a super wet board for me where I could have four, five, five, six, seven, eight. I could have all the good strong hands here and he really can. So he bets $110 and you see he just kind of flicks it in the middle. I don't really think he's that strong here and I decide to raise to 330. So. Out of the small blind here, I could have any two cards. Definitely a much better board for me. And I like this raise a lot. It's going to put him in a tough spot with even aces because, you know, I just smashed this board. I do want to add in here that while I'm looking at this, I think I should make the raise about 400 to 450. But on the other hand, if I did have a six, I would have wanted to raise a little bit smaller because I wouldn't want to blow him off aces, kings, queens, ace, king, ace, queen, because he'd be drawing dead unless he had ace, king, ace, queen of spades. But regardless, I think I should be going up to about 400, 450 here. What do you guys think? He thinks about it for a little while and decides to call. So I'm thinking that I'm going to have to bomb the river or get another really good card for me. And the river comes a three, yet another low card, so buckle up. I decide to bet $550. I honestly should have made it $800, and I had about $1,500 in stack here, so honestly, I don't even mind an all-in. So honestly, I don't even hate an all-in here, because it's going to put him in such a gross spot with aces, kings, queens, anything besides a straight. I mean, even a set is going to be like, like, what? Do you have the six here? My heart is beating faster than it's ever beat before. I'm nervous, I'm sweating, I'm trying to stare at the board. I'm trying to just relax myself, slow down my heartbeat, not give anything away. Thinks about it for a really, really long time and he flicks the call and turns over kings. Super frustrating here. I definitely like the sizing and my raise and you know everything that I did because I put him in a really tough spot and it shows that because he thought long on the turn and thought long on the river unfortunately he had one of those hands that pretty much can't fold here I mean honestly you could find a fold here with kings but especially because I haven't been playing a lot of hands I've been playing super tight and he's been raising a lot of hands so unfortunately we just bluff at the wrong time when he has kings Super unfortunate, we punted off all of our profit. I think maybe we're up 20 or 30 bucks now. And we're on to the next. I'm curious what you guys think about this hand. Please let me know in the comments. 
I gave you my sound reasoning as to why I raised the turn, why I raised the river. I like the way I played it with a super strong hand. I would have just called the flop. I wouldn't have just raised on the flop with pocket eights, pocket sevens, somehow flopped straight, seven, eight for two pair. I would have raised the turn just like I did. And the river sizing, although I think I should have went bigger, you know, it's a size that looks like I'm trying to get called. It's a size that looks like I'm going for value. So I like the sizing. I think it would have been very tough to call an all in, although that does look more bluffy. It's a super polar bet. I either really have it or really don't. I either have the six or don't. I got to try to shake it off and continue the session so that we can build back our stack. So let's see what happens. Well, that was super frustrating. Um, we got in the game 4,000, we won in 2-5. And then we headed over to 10-10 and punted some money. I mean, I like the play, but you know, maybe I should have just kept my profit instead of trying to push my limits. <laughs> so, you know, the final numbers are here. And um, yeah, I mean, it hits, it sucks to end a session like that and just be frustrated, but I didn't want to keep playing on tilt and lose more money. So we still book a win and thanks for watching. As always, subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post next, follow my Twitter, get my Discord link in the bio, talk hands with me and all of my community. Again, thank you guys for the support. It means the world to me. We're almost at a thousand subscribers.